Welcome to Reflections with Vin Desh, a weekly discussion series that challenges our perception of the world and ourselves. Learn more at thedispassionateobserver.com. That's T-H-E-D-I-S-P-A-S-S-I-O-N-A-T-E-O-B-S-E-R-V-E-R.com. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Reflections with Vindesh. And today we are talking about Nomo FOMO. FOMO, as many of you know, is the fear of missing out. This term has become very popular in present times because we spend so much time on social media. We are so obsessed with celebrities as a culture. We are obsessed with influencers. We are obsessed with creating the perfect life, curating a highlight reel of ourselves, and posting this for the world to see. On the one hand, we should recognize that the highlight reel we post does not reflect our reality, and therefore the highlight reel that other people post similarly does not reflect their reality. Yet somehow we miss this in the equation. So in modern times, we get on Facebook, we get on Instagram, we see beautiful pictures of a tropical vacation. We see people sipping cocktails on a beach, watching the sun set over the ocean. We see private planes. We see parties on boats. We see encounters with celebrities. We see a globe-trotting lifestyle, and we think, My God, this is so wonderful. What is wrong with me? I am missing out. Even intelligent people get caught up in this phenomenon. I spoke with my sister. She told me an interesting story. She'd gotten to Bali a few months ago. She went to Bali, and she decided to do a dive because she'd seen a picture on Instagram of one of her friends diving into crystal blue water and coming across a magnificent ancient statue. And this moment seemed to be so poignant, so full of life, that she signed up to do the exact same thing. Now, what was her experience? She got in a boat with 20 other people. They went out to the side of the dive. They all lined up. In rapid succession, they jumped off the boat. They went into the water. They posed next to the statue, snapped a picture, and immediately came out. There was no spontaneity. There was no sense of wonder, no sense of discovery. All the things promised by the picture simply never materialized. And my sister was so disappointed, it soured her, not just on the diving part of the trip, but on the entire vacation. And interestingly enough... Our tendency towards FOMO extends beyond the online world. We see this in the offline world. In fact, FOMO is simply a codification of something, of a human tendency that's been around forever. Our tendency to compare ourselves to others, to feel like the grass is always greener on the other side, that somehow there is something wonderful that we are missing out on, that we are not partaking of. I've seen this with many people. They'll take random snapshots of other people's lives and will say, my God, Tim is out at parties every single night. Why can't I be like Tim? George is making a ton of money. He's doing so well in his career. I'm going nowhere. Marty is a phenomenal skier, an incredible athlete. What have I done? We create an expectation that we should be out at parties all the time. We should be making a ton of money. We should be in peak physical condition. Yet we ignore the fact that Tim is bipolar. We ignore the fact that George 
has no time for his family. We ignore the fact that Marty is risking his life and might kill himself on one of his ski jumps. We ignore all of that and paint a fantasy in our mind. And then we compare our reality to something that doesn't even exist. And we lament the fact that our reality does not match this fantasy that we have created. This, my friends, is insanity. This makes no sense. And beyond the insanity, beyond the pathology of FOMO, lies a much deeper problem. This is the terrible, cruel irony of FOMO. In FOMO, we are seeking a better life. We are seeking more than we presently have. We look at what we have, our jobs, our social activities, the way that we feel about ourselves, the way that we perceive other people perceiving us, and we think, this simply isn't enough. My life doesn't mean anything. FOMO, in a sense, is a continual pursuit of a better life, a continual pursuit of more. And this is the irony. Because in that pursuit of more, we throw away what we have. We never even examine what we have. If we're always looking for what's coming next, the next job, the next relationship, the next social situation, we are not immersed in right now. And right now is where life happens. Life happens in the present. If our mind is not present, then we are not living. So as we search for this better life, as we search for something more, not only do we throw away our time, not only do we throw away our opportunity, we do so without ever picking it up and turning it over and seeing what it's all about. It's like taking a pile of diamonds and dumping them in the trash because we mistake them for a pile of sand, for something that's worthless. Yet how would we know what our life means when we have never experienced it, when we are so conditioned to looking for more? We are so conditioned to moving away from the reality that stares us in the face. And these are things like the time that we spend with the people that we love, the satisfaction that we get from our daily routines, from doing our jobs, from moving consistently through life, from improving ourselves, from evolving, from expressing, from creating, from appreciating the stillness that underlies our existence, that underlies the beating of our heart and the rhythm of our breath. We never connect with any of this. We throw this away without a second thought. And we get to the end of our lives and we realize that we have been chasing an illusion, that we have thrown away countless moments, countless opportunities in search of something that doesn't exist. So please, no mo, FOMO. What's the solution? Every time we get that sense of missing out, of needing to be somewhere else, let's train our minds to come back to the present, to focus on what's happening right now to focus on what is. No matter how many times our mind waters, no matter how many times we feel disengaged, let's pull back to the present, pull back to right now, and let's focus on activities that actually capture our attention, that engage us. Not mindlessly flipping through Netflix specials or casually scrolling through an infinite series of Instagram posts. Let's do things that stimulate our intellect, that connect us to others, that improve our relationships, that allow us to marvel in the beauty of this world, in the stillness that underlies all existence. Focus on the right activities. Feel the flow, the joy of simply being. Let's appreciate what we have. Let's start from where we are. Let go of FOMO. And let's start to really live. 
If you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcasting app. Every five-star review allows us to share more unique and insightful content. Learn more at thedispassionateobserver.com. Thanks for listening, and please tune in again next week. Peace.